Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Good to see you. So we have the candle burning again um, and I'm here to show you some more books that I love to use for my junk journals. Um, so last time we looked at the uh, Edith Holden books, the, the, you know, the two original ones. Today we're going to focus on another of my favourite artists which is Gordon Benningfield. I first heard about this artist on Tanya from Tatty Treasures channel. Um, she also has a very good play playlist about um, books and book flip throughs and books that she likes to use. So I definitely recommend checking that out if you haven't seen it. Um, but these are my uh, new Gordon Benningfield books that I wanted to show you. I have had several of his books in the past and really I don't think you can go wrong with any of his books to be honest. But I'm going to show you these three today. So we've got two of the Poems of Collection. And then we also have this one, which is Benningfield's English Villages. So I think I will show you the poem ones first. OK, so let's start with Poems of the Countryside. Um, this is one of my favourites for sure. So the, uh, the poems books by Gordon Benningfield are a landscape sort of size. Um, they're much smaller than some of his other books. And you'll see the difference when we get to the English Villages one. So this is Poems of the Countryside. Let's try and work in my candle. Um, so here we have English poetry and especially English lyric poetry is one of the glories of world literature. In Poems of the Countryside, a wide selection of poems, some familiar, some much less so, is sensitively juxtaposed with Gordon Benningfield's magnificent pictures, largely taken from his best-selling books, Benningfield's Countryside and Benningfield's English Landscape. This creates a very special kind of anthology, one that will give poetic and visual pleasure for many years to come. Now I especially like the, the poems books just because they do come in this handy size. So the images are quite a bit smaller than his larger books. Um, and, you know, straight away you're just met with these really beautiful artistry. I absolutely adore his books. So I'll do a flip through. Obviously we have three books to get through, so I'll try to be <laughs> a little bit faster whilst still um, giving you a relaxing video to watch. Um, just, they're absolutely stunning. You know, as pages, as journal cards, you know, you could um, use this as scenery behind, behind things. Really beautiful. So it's all based on his Art, artwork that he's sort of embarked upon really throughout the UK a lot of the south of the UK but he has also gone up north as well um, to you know Yorkshire and places like that um, and in amongst his imageries in these books we have beautiful poems that um, come from you know famous poets um, so these are really nice I like to use these to actually cut out phrases or words or quotes so for example Daisies and buttercups gladdened my sight, like treasures of silver and gold. Um, that comes from Thomas Campbell. So you can imagine if that was a quote in a journal or on a tag or something, that would be quite nice. And, you know, you get some smaller images as well. These would look really nice as little decorations or embellishments on a page. Maybe you want to use it as the backdrop of a cluster, something like that. Whilst these larger images... You know, you could cut them down and have them as journal card or tags. Um, or you could cut the whole thing out and have that just as a page in your journal. <laughs> These cows. Really beautiful imagery. And again, similar to Edith Holden in the sense of it, I feel like it celebrates a lot that our country has to offer in terms of natures and landscapes and countrysides. I mean, just wouldn't you just love to live in this little house? Absolutely darling. Here we have, I believe this is a thrush. I could be wrong. He doesn't have them labelled like, uh, you know, Edith Holden would, but still an absolutely beautiful painting. A little river. We have a brick bridge here, stone bridge. So his artwork is, is very different from... From stuff. I'm trying to work out whether he would have used, you know, watercolours or, or acrylics. 
I don't know too much about artwork, but I do know when a painting is just beautiful. So as I say, this is the Poems of the Countryside version. We'll look at Poems of the Seasons in a moment, which is similar in size to this one. There's some the, the Poems books always seems to be this landscape sort of size. Um, but the Poems of the Seasons takes you right through, you know, spring, summer, autumn, winter, as you might guess. And um, so, you know, if you if you if you do do seasonal work like myself, then one of those books can do you, um, you know, lots of ephemera, lots of journal pages for a long time to come, really. Aren't they lovely, though? Just really, really lovely to see. As I say, it, it does celebrate the country really very well. I found something interesting. So Gordon Benningfield was born in the 1930s. Um, so his books, most of the ones that I have are from the 1980s. And um, <laughs> little sheep, sheep and lambs in those fields. Um, so yeah, most of my books are from the 1980s. And um, they're new to me. Obviously, I've only discovered him through junk journals. And I'm saddened to say that Gordon Benefield isn't with us any longer. Um, look at that cottage. Isn't that just a beautiful setting? Now this is a very good autumnal type of image, as well as um, we'll flip through the English Villages book in a second and you'll see I'm very much inspired to work with uh, cottages one day. This is another of my favourites, those Shire horses harvesting the fields and you'll see Edith Holden has an image with Shire horses in which is another of my favourites from her so um, I find that interesting that uh, I don't know maybe they were maybe he was inspired by her or maybe he didn't know of her at all I don't know but or maybe it's just it's another thing to be grateful for in the UK that we have um, those things to see. Butterflies on the apples and here we'll have an autumnal image. So even though this one isn't the seasonal book, it does, you know, it does take you through his his artwork through seasons because he was very big into nature and countryside walks. And so he just simply naturally documented throughout the year as well. So we have the black breeze coming in for, you know, September-ish time maybe. And the fruits on those trees. <laughs> These little... I don't know, are they wood mice? Little vole things? Looking for their, their berries. Yeah, so um yeah, so I discovered unfortunately he's no longer with us, Gordon Benningfield. Um he passed away in the nineteen nineties, so it was uh, nineteen eight ni nineteen ninety eight, I believe. Um which is which is a shame, but if he was born in the nineteen thirties then that is a nice I suppose it's not that, or maybe 60s? Was he in his 60s then? My maths is terrible, so I could be completely wrong in that. It's a beautiful barn owl here with the poem To the Owl. So where relevant, he does, uh, he has chosen poems to go with his, with his paintings in the books. So a really, really nice book to have. And, um, especially if you're into botanicals and nature, there's a, there's a lot to, to work with in these books. And as you'll see, we're moving on into more wintry scenes. So we have what looks to be a farm in the background just there in the winter with the frost. Yeah, so I suppose, is that a 60s? I don't know, 60s, 70s? <laughs> My maths is appalling. Um, but, you know, at least we have his books to remember his artwork by. And, you know, as someone who, you know, is, is much younger than that, um, it's it's nice to be able to think that through junk journals and everything, we're able to bring this person's artwork to life again. Because I don't imagine that his books would still be published now unless they have a resurgence of popularity. So much so that publishers pick them up again and, you know, do some more some more copies. Here we have poems about the primrose. Interesting, different Roberts, 
Robert Herrick and Robert Burns both wrote about the primrose. Ooh. Primroses must be popular for poets, eh? <laughs> Here we have some rolling hills in what appears to be dusk or something with those, those yellow sky coming through. Dawn, dusk, dawn maybe. And the daffodils. Williams Wordsworth, of course, that's a <laughs> that's a famous one, the poem that we I'm sure we all know or have heard of. I'll just be walking along there right now. <laughs> so yeah, I absolutely adore his artwork. Um really enjoy these books. And as I say, the poems are a nice bonus for um as I say, cutting out those quotes and those words. To the cuckoo. I'm assuming that's a cuckoo then. Oh, there's another one here to the cuckoo. Different different poets both wrote about the cuckoo in this case. We have blossoms. One of my favourite, favourite trees is the blossom. And um, cherry blossoms and magnolia. They are my favourite trees. One day I hope to go to Japan. Um, we were supposed to go for my husband's 30th, but of course, you know, the C word happened. Um, so our, our trip we you know we couldn't we couldn't book it um but it's still on our list and we really want to go for springtime so we can see the blossoms in japan um where you know the whole country over that period just turns a sea of pink from top to bottom apparently you can like follow follow the country and follow the pink blossoms it's um one day and i will be sure to report back it's beautiful this river So really nice for woodland journals as well. There is a book by Gordon Benningfield. Um, I believe it's Benningfield's Woodlands. I've dismantled my copy, unfortunately, and I still have the images, so I haven't I haven't replaced the book as yet. But they've that's some really nice woodland imagery in there as well. Okay, so as I say, that was the Poems of the Countryside by Gordon Benningfield, and I think we should move on now to the Seasons one. Okay, here we are. So this is Poems of the Seasons. Um, again, landscape, similar size to the last one. And this one has a, a linen uh, cover. Um, the last book that I got also had a linen cover. Um, I think that was Poems of the Spring. Um, and I'm actually using that for my uh, Tim Holtz Ringbound journals. So just a heads up that sometimes you might find they've got a really nice cover. Um, because what I did was I basically just turned the cover this way, took this, I'm going to take the spine off and then have my rings here and it becomes this portrait book. So just in case you're wondering how you could use the book covers, that's one option. Okay, so here we have more anthologies of verse and poems. Have brought pleasure to innumerable lovers of poets, poetry and the countryside. Poems of the Seasons is a delightful celebration of the glories of the changing year. And as I say, if you do work seasonally, then this book is a great option for you. So I'm going to assume that it starts in the springtime. So let's move on then. So here we have what appears to be like heath, heath, heaths, heath. Heath, Heathland, <laughs> and snowdrops. So these would be coming out in February here in the UK. So I suppose that's not quite, not quite spring. Late winter, early spring is sort of the, maybe what we're at at this point. So you can see we, we have maybe darker imagery. And the lambs. And then we have more to the primrose. So yeah, we must be coming into spring now. <laughs> and so shire horses again, aren't they beautiful? They're just absolutely stunning animals, I love those. Uh, my mum has had a thoroughbred growing up. Um, I, used to, I used to take horse riding lessons, not on the thoroughbred. Um, Chrissy was her name. That was uh, short for Crystal Vale. She was an ex-racehorse. And um, 
yeah I, I went on Chrissy a couple of times but she was a little bit um, skitty so uh, yeah I only went on her a couple of times you know my mum was thrown off of the, the horse at one point so it's a bit too dangerous for me because I was young younger um, but I did take horse riding lessons every weekend for quite a few years um, starting from when I was about I think nine nine or ten absolutely loved it but I don't I don't have the thigh muscles for it any longer I'm sure you know you can uh, sort of work with them and, and and build up your muscles which I'm sure I did as a, as a young girl but uh, yeah today I think I would struggle to do a, a rising trot you know because you do need strong strong thigh muscles to be able to do that strong core I think they say as well so we're still in spring and that must be some blossoms. So you get some more abstract paintings of his as well, um, compared to something that's less abstract. I mean, just look at that, all those bluebells. Absolutely beautiful. We get lots of bluebell woods here in the UK. I'm sure other countries do as well, but, you know, especially here in the UK, we do get, you know, fields and fields of bluebells in the woodlands. Not every woodland, but um, you can go to certain ones and they're just renowned for having fields of bluebells as far as the eye can see and it's absolutely stunning. Now, surprisingly, we're about, I don't know, a quarter of the way through the book, third of the way through the book, and we're still in spring. So he has, he has done a lot of artwork related to spring. I did have a, a book before which was called Poems of the Spring. And that one, well, yes, was, <laughs> was all about spring. Um, and the clover, I believe. I recognise that from uh, the flower fairies, actually. More sheep. He definitely enjoyed painting the sheep in the fields. Or just, that was just naturally what he saw lots of. Interspersed, of course, with his original sketches, or, you know, uh, copies of his, his original sketches. Before they became his intricate paintings. So now we're approaching summer. Those beautiful flowers. I really like these and you'll see this from the uh, the country, uh, the English villages book that I've got. I really adore the images where you see like houses in the background or cottages or, or farm farms. I think that's some of his best work and that's just my opinion, obviously, art is uh, one's own opinion, but yeah, for me, that's the that's the imagery that I really love to see from him. Um, I don't know why. Something like this would just make beautiful backings for journal cards. Here we have a poem about the sun, so we have, you know, sun, sunset dusk, that sun blazing in the summer. I think his first book was Benningfield's Butterflies, which is where those would be taken from. And the windmill. Yeah, th these these images are my favourites because you just you can pick out this nice focal point from the house or the cottage, and you can really really picture yourself being there. I think. So yeah, I I use these types of pages a lot for pages in journals and um, you know if it's got writing on the back then I'll cover this with uh, tea dyed paper or a digital or something equally you know you could cut them down as journal cards quite nicely and, and you wouldn't need to add much to them maybe a label or a word or something I mean those poppies are just delicious <laughs> if I can call poppies delicious they look delicious here we have the the hay bales and the the straw bales, <laughs> the hens. So these would be great books if you're into botanicals, but also if you're into, um, is it called cottage core? Um, where you have images of cottages and countryside and all of the rest. The apples. So I assume we're now coming into Autumn, yeah, bright autumn in September here. There's the windmill again. I'm not sure if it's the same one from before, but 
we have a windmill again and just look at that isn't that lovely i think that's from the the cover of the book this beautiful basket of apples and blackberries in the background <laughs> and the phoenix not phoenix <laughs> oh my goodness i have harry potter in my head pheasants <laughs> I don't know what it must be the long tail. Yes, I'm, I'm thinking about Harry Potter clearly. Um, here we are. I think I'm not the only one who does it. And again, I think we're coming into more towards winter now soon. Again, nope, still in autumn. Um, yeah, it's not just me. There's a there's a few of us out there on video who um say things a different word from what we mean. And it's so easy to do. It's surprising, really. And I think when you're on video, you catch yourself doing it more and more than if you were just talking, you know, talking willy nilly to your friends or whatever. Um, it is surprising, though, how much it, it, it does. It does happen. <laughs> happens to me all the time. Here's a wintry image. We have the is that mistletoe and the holly, holly berries. See that? That would make a beautiful journal card in a winter botanical kind of journal, which is on my list, maybe not for this year, but um, certainly at some point I'll do winter botanicals again. Okay, so that was Poems of the Seasons, and now we're going to move on to possibly one of my favourite Benningfield books. So, as you can see, this one is quite a lot larger. It's it's a big book. Um, this is Benningfield's English Villages. Um, often the poems of books that you've just seen, there are other poems of books by Benningfield. Um, they are that landscape version normally. If it starts with Benningfield's whatever, Benningfield's butterflies, Benningfield's woodlands, in this case English Villages, and so forth, it will often be this great big large, almost like an art book kind of size. So just to bear that in mind. But there are lots of ways that we can use the images inside and you'll see that they are just absolutely stunning again. Um, so this cover in my case has, um, has the picture on the cover. It's not like a linen cover or anything. But that's okay because it's a stunning image. I know you can't see the candle, unfortunately, but it is there. I can smell it. Okay, so in Benningfield's English Villages, the author went in search of traditional village life, finding special places with interesting architecture, wildlife and country characters. Here he records in words and pictures what he found. Okay. So a lot of these will be images of cottages and villages and little towns. So we're just going to skip through here and we come to my first most favourite image. This to me just screams secret garden and I really just want to wander through that gate. Isn't it beautiful? Now obviously this is a large book. I mean this is my hand for reference. It's you know it, it is sizable. Um, this I would if I was going to use this, I personally would use this on the cover of a journal. Um, I would need to cut it down because you know, I'm not going to make a journal that sized, unlikely to anyway. But if you position, if you position things correctly with your scissors, you can start to cut down. You know, all of this you could, as nice as it is, of course, you could cut that away and be left with the gate and the window and the blossom or is that magnolia so there are ways to use them and then interspersed with those full page images in these large books you often also get smaller uh, images which are just journal cards straight away aren't they okay so we're starting in Hertfordshire so that's actually where Gordon, Gordon Benningfield was from as I say really beautiful journal card sort of size and then you get the smaller images almost like the poems books, where these could be nice uh, pages in your journal. <laughs> Little ducks, still in Hertfordshire. Hopefully you can see all of that. 
I really love his artwork. So here um, we are strings in the book just here. So what you could do is cut the strings just here and take this double page out and then we could have this as some kind of page. The only thing I would say is it's a shame to lose the white. Like if you were to distress this down a bit, if you didn't like, you know, the bright white, that would actually be really nice space to journal around this sort of page. So then I think, is there some way that you could maybe do some kind of like flip out or something in order to, you know, keep the, the good part of the image. So say this was your page, it would still be a large journal page, but at least then you can still see the house. And then you flip out to see more of the picture and the, the white border. That's one way to potentially do it, depending on how big your journal is. But there are always ways to use them. And again, you know, you could just cut around the main part of the image, really. So moving on to Buckinghamshire. And again, you get his sketches mixed in with his actual, you know, finished paintings. And you just, all of these quintessential houses in the lovely gardens. You know, this would suit Peter Rabbit just fine. <laughs> that type of journal. A cottage themed journal, botanical journals. There are so many different ways to use the images. Um, and like this. This is stunning. This is the Cotswolds. Um, our house actually has Cotswold brick. Um, and, you know, with this type of thing, I mean, that could be a page. And then this, you could sort of chop it down and have this as a really nice journal card. I mean, just look at that. <laughs> look at that house with the, the flowers and everything. Really beautiful. So a lot of these images from the Cotswolds are from the Slaughters. Um, I know that's a horrible <laughs> name for villages. Um, but you have Upper and Lower Slaughter. I think there might be other ones as well, but um, those are the two that I remember. My, that's Lower Slaughter with the mill, the water mill on the river. And again, you know, you could cut these down, have them as pages or journal cards type thing. Um, yeah, my husband and I did a treasure hunt around the Cotswolds one year. Um, it wasn't for real treasure, um, and it wasn't for junk journal supplies. It was um, this type of treasure hunt where you, you're you solving like puzzles and riddles, um, and you're, you're trying to find like historic treasures. So I don't know, if you solved a, a puzzle and it took you to... Um, I don't know, like a plaque that you might not have seen, that type of thing. And it was really, really fun. And we got to see lots of the Cotswolds in just one day, which was, which was amazing. So here we are in Essex. And I wanted to pause at this image because similar to the secret garden image at the front, I would happily have this as my house. Um, I mean, just look at that beautiful floral archway leading up to the, the pretty, pretty little porch. It's just absolutely stunning. My husband actually comes from Essex and um, and uh, I joked about seeing that image and saying, well, we'll just have to go back to Essex then, won't we? <laughs> go find that house. Cambridgeshire. Again, really nice. I mean, that's a large journal card, but if you were doing a file folder or something, then, you know, you could definitely use that. Chopping of the wood in Barton. This badger. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a reindeer. What does it say? At the end of the year, Father Christmas now comes to Bird's Farm with his reindeer. It's a remarkable evening. Last year, there were excited children queuing up to enter the lamp light of the cow shed. Their faces shone and their eyes sparkled when they saw the reindeer standing in the straw. Oh, well, there you go. That's my Christmas. <laughs> my Christmas cover sorted. And again, you get two two images there. Nicely, nice to be cut down. In Norfolk. 
There's the windmill again, or a windmill. Again, really nice journal card that. You wouldn't need to do anything, you would just cut it down and it looks like a postcard. Wiltshire. So this is where I spent my teens. Um, we moved there when I was 11 to Wiltshire. We lived in a little village called Luggershaw, which yes, had <laughs> thatched roofs. Not our house, but uh, many of the houses there did. And there was a castle, which was once King Henry VIII's hunting lodge. Which might be interesting to know. This is Castle Coombe, technically part of the Cotswolds, but he's put it in the Wiltshire category. I think because it's quite on the, the edge of the Cotswolds. Really beautiful village, that. So yeah, we had this, uh, our village and the castle. Yep, it was King Henry's hunting lodge. And um, it's in ruins now, looked after by the English heritage. But that was, that was fun, <laughs> fun to hang out with at my teens, you know. That was where I hung with my friends. And um, yeah, I lived about, I don't know, a 20 minute drive from the Stonehenge. Um, I lived in Hampshire before that. But um, yeah, we moved to the Wiltshire area. So here we are in Dorset. And again, I have to pause at this image because I just adore it. It's a post office in a cottage. And then we have the, you know, the post box and the post office sign. And I'll just read you the snippet that he wrote here. On the edge of Dorset, near the New Forest, I was visiting my aunt at Poole. On the way back, I was thinking of subjects for the book when I came across this wonderful post office. The office was half a cottage. I suppose you walked up the garden path to send a parcel, buy a pound of tomatoes, and then have a cup of tea with the local postmaster. I thought it was so typical of Dorset. Isn't that just the cutest thing? It's lovely. And again, I mean, I would have this as the cover of a journal easily you know, to frame frame the house in such a way as to show, like, how interesting can buildings be? You know, the fact that it's a, a post office in a cottage. So here we have the New Forest. And if you remember from the Edith Holden flip throughs, I was talking about the, uh, the ponies. Well, <laughs> here to prove I wasn't making it up, here we have a New Forest pony. And... It, it almost looks like it's grazing this house in this house's uh, garden. I don't think it is because there's the garden gate, but um, uh, just to prove they do get, you know, really close to, to where you are. So moving then on to Surrey. And again, you know, you could cut this image and have two journal cards quite nicely. We'll have it framed somehow, maybe. Similar bird as what we saw in one of the poems books from earlier, if you remember. Just in maybe a different background. <laughs> oh, the cockerel. And the cat. Isn't that just cottagecore completely? If you've not heard of cottagecore as an aesthetic or as a theme, uh, it was new to me as well. Um, but it, uh, yeah, it's all about, it's very homey. So, you know, a house and the pets and the gardens and that type of thing. That's cottage core. And sometimes I think you also get like fruit and vegetables. So like, um, you know, fruit pie type feeling. Like a very cosy, homey type of feeling is what you get from cottage core. Uh, just in case you want to go in research cottage core as a theme or anything. So moving on then to Suffolk and just, oh, there is their basket of apples again. Mmm, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's such a large image. That's the only downside to these books is they are stunning, but obviously you do get the larger images. Um, you know, there's ways to cut them down, as I've done it with the Woodlands, the Woodlands book when I was working on my autumnal, um, my junk mail journal, which I haven't finished. I really do need to get that finished this year. 
So there are ways to use the images. They're just a little bit trickier maybe than the smaller books, but all the more worth it for the types of images that you do get. <laughs> There's that house again. Perfectly popped into journal card size. So there you go. That was, um, that's them giving you a suggestion of where, where to cut that previous image that we looked at. And just to finish off, here is Gordon Benningfield. I'll just try to make sure the light's not shining weirdly. So I'm just going to read a little bit here. Gordon Benningfield began his career as an ecclesiastical artist. That was a really difficult word to say. But from the early 1960s, he developed a reputation as a landscape and natural history painter. His work has reached wide audiences through his appearances on television and radio. So it talks here about his books. So we have Benningfield's Butterflies was his first book, published in 1978. Then we had Benningfield's Countryside. That's a book that is on my list. Imagine that being lovely, but that would be this large size, I imagine. And then it starts talking about the poems books later on in the late 1980s. So there you are. Oh, and this is interesting. He's designed two sets of stamps for the British Post Office showing butterflies and other insects. That was in the 1980s. And yeah, he lived in he lived in Hertfordshire at the time. So there you are. Those are the three Gordon Benningfield books that I really, really recommend. Sorry about my my light shining just there. Um, the great news about these books is if you are able to find used copies, then generally they are cheaper than some of the, the other books, um, the other botanical books, Edith Holden, etc. You can often find these, at least here in the UK, might be different overseas. Here you're looking at £2 a copy, £2.50 a copy, something like that, which is, which is really not too bad. Um, for the amount of images that you do get uh, in them and as you've seen the images are just beautiful I really like his, him as an artist I'm gonna be pressed hard pressed to use some of the images from this one especially the English village one um, you know these the two images that I pulled out well the three actually if you include the post office as well I kind of want to frame them and have them as artwork on my wall so I may have to get another copy, one for junk journaling and one for uh, just admiring. I hope you've enjoyed those. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm just going to end with, <laughs> make sure you can see the candle. Um, and yeah, well, the next video will be a mishmash of botanical books that I enjoy using and recommend. Um, they will be by different authors and different artists. And I won't do full flip throughs of them all because um, some of them are quite similar in what you receive. But I will show you, you know, the names of the books and parts of the insides to um, give you some ideas of other books that you might want to look for for junk journaling. For now, though, I will say goodbye and leave you with the delights of Gordon Benningfield. And if I do receive any more books by him in the future, which I'm sure I will order more. As I say, I've got Benningfield's Countryside uh, on my list. Uh, if I do receive them and um, recommend them, then I will come on and do, you know, flip throughs for them. Uh, but for now, if you can get your hands on any of these books and you liked what you saw inside, then hopefully that helps. And yeah, keep an eye out for those used books. <laughs> All right then, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye for now.